Now let's get talking. The Small and Medium Enterprises Development Agency of Nigeria, SMEDAN, has commitment to nurturing entrepreneurship uh, has undoubtedly played a significant role in shaping the landscape of small businesses in Nigeria. According to the report, Nigeria boasts of about 40 million or more micro, small and medium enterprises employing over 80% uh, of uh, uh, the population, which contributes about 50% of the country's gross domestic product. However, their potential often remains untapped due to a variety of challenges, including limited access to resources and inefficient operational processes. For more insights to this, I'm being joined by the uh, Director General uh, of Small and Medium Enterprises Agency of Nigeria. It's his first time on the show, Mr. Olawale Fasoya. He joins us from our Abuja studios. Good afternoon, sir. Thank you so much. It's good to have you on the program. Good afternoon. Thank you for having me. Great. Let's start with the number of active MSMEs across the country. We have some 40 million in some cases. Some say 42, 43 million. Well, well, we'll, we'll get the figures from you, which we would uh, agree with. But what really is your assessment uh, to their contribution to the entire GDP uh, in recent times? Well, thank you very much. Uh, let me first uh, say that uh, the 40 million that uh, you earlier said was as a result of uh, the survey we did with the uh, Nigerian Bureau of Statistics prior to COVID-19. Uh, but after COVID-19, the figure dropped to 39.6 million. So currently active by our statistics is 39.6 million. And uh, this 39.6 million is contributing 46% uh, to GDP and about 85% to employment. Uh, unfortunately, the contribution to exports uh, is very low. It's just 6.2 million. And then uh, we must also understand that this number uh, includes nano businesses. And nano businesses are the one-man businesses, the are uh, businesses that are very tiny. These are informal businesses. Most of them are largely informal, and they constitute the majority. In fact, going by the statistics, the number of small and medium enterprises are less than 2 million. The remaining are nano and micro enterprises. And they are the ones sustaining the economy because uh, most of them are not affected by shocks. They still have to do their businesses, uh, whichever way it goes. So. Uh, they are a very significant sector of the economy. And like I said, they are contributing no less than 85% to employment. And um, this is at par with their counterparts globally. It's just that the negative aspect is the contribution to exports. So the contribution to exports is so low, and that's an area where uh, we need to assist them to be able to package their products well to be able to adopt best global practices so that they can also uh, take advantage of the ASCFTA. Mm. It's a good way to start. Uh, you're talking about exports now, and I'm also interested in that. So how, how much are you helping to build that capacity? I want to start to see our products on the shelf with international peers, what we see abroad. So how well are our exporters also embracing all of the initiatives being instituted by SMEDAN to help them improve packaging, production, and all of that? Well, like you said, what we are doing is to build their capacity and to work with other relevant agencies like the Export Promotion Council to see, to at least to let people even understand why they need to package their product very well. A number of Nigerians are innovative, and when you go out there, you see nice products but bad packaging. So as an agency of government, uh, apart from building their capacity, uh, we are also interested in having common facilities for packaging. And um, as I'm talking to you before the end of the year, uh, we will have um, a product packaging common facility in our head office at IDU, so that SMEs can outsource their packaging from us. Uh, we also have one already in Ikorodu, which will soon be commissioned so that people can come, apart from learning how to package their products better, they will also use our facility at a very small amount so that uh, 
um, some of them now, we will be able to guide them all through. And then we're also encouraging private sector players to set up common facilities for product packaging. Because at times, it's not good for you to be the one to source your raw material, to be the one to produce, or to be the one to do the packaging. You can outsource your packaging. So that, and that's what part of what we have been teaching them. And a number of them are doing this. Uh, we now have a number of entrepreneurs that have just, their business is just meant for packaging. So when you finish your product, you take it to them, they package for you, and you're export ready. Mm. Interesting. Let's get to understand efforts made by government and, of course, development finance institutions to support small businesses in the country. I know BOI and all of that uh, to be doing more of this. But how far has this impacted uh, growth and uh, more contribution of the MSMEs uh, to the country's GDP? And it's good you even mentioned the Bank of Industry. We also have the Bank of Agri. We have the Development Bank of Nigeria. We have NISA. And uh, these are all geared towards supporting SMEs because uh, most uh, commercial banks don't want to touch, especially people that are just going into business. So these are places where they can run to. Um, most banks will still want you to bring collateral, to pledge your house, and all, which most SMEs don't have. So uh, banks, development banks like the Bank of Industry, have some form of loan that is non-collateralized. If you just be too garato, you can access up to 10 million with the Bank of Industry. I know some commercial banks too now have such windows for money that is not uh, too much. If, if, if the volume of funds that you are looking for is below 5 million, below 10 million, some of them have all forms of uh, way to guarantee you so that you can access the fund. And the government too had initiated a number of uh, programs like... Uh, the survival fund period, our government was able to give out even grants to a number of MSMEs to assist them in their businesses. There was a time government also even paid salaries of a number of SMEs for like three months just to push in the effect of COVID-19. So all these initiatives are geared towards supporting small businesses. For us in the agency, we also initiated uh, what we call matching fund with uh, some commercial banks where we use government fund to reduce the interest rate and the SMEs in agribusiness can access between 250,000 and the 2.5 million. So these are all efforts to see that we fill the gap because most commercial banks don't give funds to a number of SMEs, and like I said, especially those that are just starting. For the small and medium business, they don't have much problem. Banks actually look for them. But for the nano and micro businesses, there's nowhere to run to. So these development banks have been filling the gap. And um, a number of initiatives are coming on board to also assist and to fill this gap for MSMEs. Let's take it a bit further. At the time, uh, there was this focus on one local government, one product. Uh, you know, saying that there is no local government in this country that doesn't have something to offer. And Snedan was actually following up with this initiative. Uh, any updates with regards to this? How far has work gone uh, with regards to, to, to this? Well, you know, Nigeria is very big. The one local government, one program has been quite successful. And what do we do? Uh, actually, the program was fashioned after the Japanese OVOP, which is one village, one program. But you know, if we want to do one village, one program in Nigeria, I mean, the task will be too daunting. So we decided to adapt it to one local government, one product. And what does it do? We identify products within the same value chain uh, has competitive and comparative advantage in different local governments. And then we look at the cooperatives. I mean, a minimum of 10 people that are in the same value chain. We identify machines that can automate what they are doing. And then we jointly get this machine so that we get the right machine for them and then give them a little working capital. So they pay back 70% 
and then we write off 30 percent. So we've been to, let me say, all the senatorial districts across the country. There are about 20 local governments that we could not penetrate because of insecurity. But people that have businesses within those local governments have been advised to now operate within the safe areas. And we have been supporting them. And the program has been quite successful. We've been on this for the past three, four years. We are currently assessing the impact. And they will let the public know very soon. But based on our preliminary report, it shows that this program had really assisted a lot of rural people. For example, people that are um, extracting uh, oil in Niger State. There, are, there is a group that we assisted, and they, they have started even exporting some of their products. You know, they, they were able to automate what they are doing. They used to produce about three gallons of uh, granite oil a day. Now they are doing about 20 gallons and their packaging have increased based on the one local government, one product program. Mm. Let's shift our focus now. So you mentioned the Nigerian Export Promotion Council, which I know there is this handshake between SMED and, and that agency, uh, that's Dr. Israel Yekusak uh, being the head of that agency. But we also have other agencies like NEPSA, SON, NAPDAC. I'm sure there's going to be that relationship between you and those, all these agencies I've mentioned. How cordial and how well are they making it seamless uh, for exporters or for products uh, or for uh, players in the manufacturing industry to thrive? Small players, I mean now, small businesses. How are they encouraging them to make it seamless for them to push their products into the markets? Well, thank you very much. When I came on board as Director General of the agency, one of my priority areas is collaboration. And mm. I used to say then that I'm ready to stoop to conquer. And I have visited a number of these organizations that our activities can complement each other. Uh, the Expo Promotion Council that you mentioned is a good example. Uh, last year, in conjunction with Expo Promotion Council, we took about 100 SMEs to the Gambia. And uh, they were carefully identified. These people, virtually about 80% of them now have markets in the Gambia. We are also planning to take them to some other West African countries. Already this year, we are working with Nexim, we are working with the Bank of Industry, we are working with the Export Promotion Council to take SMEs to the International African Trade Fair in uh, Egypt. So these are some of the things we are doing. And we are not just waiting to take them out. I told you, uh, working with Export Promotion Council, we have jointly been assisting in building capacity of MSMEs to be able to access global markets. We are working with standard organizations. We are working with NAVDAC. I visited NAVDAC to let NAVDAC know some of the complaints of SMEs. And they are already looking into it. I visited virtually all organizations that have one thing or the other to do with SMEs. And uh, we are still doing that. And we are not even leaving it to our sister agencies alone. Uh, we have approached international bodies like the GIZ. They are working closely with us. Our Commonwealth Secretariat is working closely with us. They've helped us to train a number of women. Uh, the International Labor Organization, we just recently launched a program for women uh, where we unveil a roadmap for women entrepreneurship development. So we are not working alone. And like I said, we believe in partnership and everything we are doing now we are complementing each other, and the partnership is working. Mm, interesting stuff. Now, DG, before I let you go, uh, it's a two-in-one question, yes. What will be your outlook, uh, considering the drive by Mr. President to want to empower small businesses, grow more small businesses? Uh, what will be your outlook if things fall in place as expected? And on the other side, AFCFTA, you mentioned, very strategic. How well are we positioned to tap into that big market? You know the market I'm talking about, the entire African market. What is your outlook in both sides? Yes, uh, and that is why we are assisting MSMEs to package their products to meet up the requirements by the AFCFTA. We are meeting with other regulatory agencies like the customs and all that to make sure that all the gaps are plugged. And uh, 
we are also building capacity of MSMEs to take advantage. And there is a lot of awareness creation that we are doing so that some of them can know what it takes, what are the requirements for them to access that market. But talking generally about Outlook, I can assure you that in the next few months, we will start seeing uh, the dividends of the Renew Hope that uh, the president has given to MSMEs. It's not easy. The president has announced, um, I, I would say, a lifeline of uh, about 200 billion to be injected into entrepreneurship development, uh, 75 billion for big businesses who we outsource from SMEs because their raw materials is from SMEs. Some of them, SMEs, are actually producing some of the, their, their products for them. They are sourced from SMEs. So that one billion for 75 companies will impact on a lot of SMEs. That's another 75 billion for access for, access for MSMEs and startups. So that's 75 billion all at single digit interest rates. So if this is injected into the economy, it will go a long way. And when we are talking about the nano businesses, these are the uh, unstructured business, the one-man businesses that is just employing himself or one other person, those that I said are largely informal. They will get 50, 50,000 grants, and uh, about one million of them will get that. So all these things will have multiplier effect on the economy. And uh, people may look at 50,000 as small. We have been in the market. We have been outside there. We are in the marketplace. We know that most of those people you see in the marketplace, their capital base is no more than 20, 30,000 naira. That's what they turn around every day. They will use that to go and buy products, sell. Some of them will use it to buy products that they will add a little value and bring back to the market. So if you get 50,000 for that business and you are properly guided, the dividends are just, uh, they, 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 they will be quite appreciative within a very short time. And we have evidences to show that 50,000 injected in some businesses, the business owners will employ one more person. So it's going to create a lot of employment because they cannot now go to the market alone to go and get their raw materials. They cannot alone do so many things. So they will employ one or two persons. So the multiplier effect is very, very much and the economy will be good for it in the next few months. So we should just be patient and then wait to see uh, these translate into economic well-being for MSMEs and the majority of our people. We'll definitely have you in again to assess and evaluate all of this. I must thank you so much, Mr. Olawale Fasonya. is the D Director General, Chief Executive Officer, Small and Medium Enterprises Agency of Nigeria, Smedan. Thank you so much. We appreciate your appearance on the program. Thank you for having me.